During the medieval and early modern period, European men and women added, subtracted, and performed other arithmetic with something called a counting board, which was any sort of flat surface in which lines had been drawn across. So this could be lines drawn in sand, it could be cloth with lines embroidered on them, it could be a table with lines drawn on them. Um, in my case, I have a board that I have drawn lines on. And they use this in conjunction with some sort of movable object. In earlier time periods, it would be something like a pebble. By the late Middle Ages and early modern period, they used specialized coin-like objects called counters. Here's an example of a 17th century counter. And in my case, I'm going to use a bunch of objects that I have to hand pennies. So to add and subtract with the counting board, the first thing you need to do was put the number on the board. So you would consider each of these lines to be a power of 10. This is a one, this is a 10, this is the 100th line, the 1,000 line, the 10,000 line, the 100,000 line, as many lines as you want. And we're gonna to get to the spaces in a minute. So if I want to say the number two, I would put two pennies on the ones line, one, two. If I wanted to do the number 20, I would put two pennies on the tens line, 10, 20. So now that's 22. To do 2022, put two pennies on the thousand line, so 2022. Now, it's really easy to see at a glance that you've got two pennies on each line. But let's imagine that we had a slightly bigger number and I kept putting pennies on this one line. At some point, we're not going to be able to easily see at a glance how many pennies we have here. Um, I don't know how many pennies I just put down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, there's nine pennies on this line. It's really hard to see that at a glance. Human beings are really good at telling small number of objects at a glance. One, two, three, four, sometimes five. So it's really easy to see I have four pennies there. You know I have five pennies here because I just had four and I've only added one. But at this point, you actually, some people will have to count, say one, two, three, four, five pennies. So the way that the counting board works is when you want to put the fifth object on the line, instead of having all five objects on the line, you take them off and you put a single one in the space above it. So five pennies here, instead we have one penny in this space, which stands for five. So five tens would be 50, so a penny here stands for 50. Five hundreds would be 500, a penny here stands for 500, 5,000, 50,000, and so on. So you will never have more than four pennies on the line or one penny in the space between it. Right? Because if you had two pennies here, right, five plus five is 10, you would just put another penny on that tens line. So th that's how you lay out numbers on an accounting board. And one of the really cool things about this is that medieval and early modern European people did not use Arabic numbers, the numbers that I had on the other side of this paper. They used Roman numerals. And some of you may be familiar with them. The symbols are I for one, V for five, X for 10, L for 50, C for 100, D for 500, M for 1000. And so if I wanted to write this number in Roman numerals, it would be MMXXII. So when you have a number on a counting board, it translates seamlessly to Roman numerals. And if you had a Roman numeral, you would just use that to know how many lines or how many pennies to put on each line or each space, right? You would just translate them seamlessly back and forth. All right, so to add numbers on the counting board, right? Because we're not just laying out these numbers for fun, we're doing this because we wanna perform arithmetic. It's really straightforward to add numbers on a counting board. So I'm just laying out a random number here So if I want to add these two numbers together, literally all I have to do is join these pennies together. Sliding them all over. All right. Um, now, 
I do have one little problem here, which is that now I have five pennies on this line. That's really easy to fix. I just take my pennies off and I add one up here to the five space, or to the 50 space. And then, because I have two here now, I just pop that up to the 100 and we're good. We have just added those numbers together. Subtraction is very similar. So if you want to subtract something, let's say I'm going to subtract, uh, this will be my bigger number, this will be my smaller number. I'll subtract this from this one. Now, if we were doing this with modern day Arabic numerals, you would start with the biggest number and you would work your way down. With a counting board, you can either start at the top and work your way down, or you can start at the bottom and work your way up. It's your choice. So I'm going to go ahead and start at the bottom and work my way up. So we have three pennies here, one here. I'm just going to take one and we're good. There's no five to subtract from, so we're good. All right. Now we have the age old problem of I've got a 10 here and nothing here. So to do this, I'm going to have to take this 100 and I'm going to have to break it down. So I am going to turn this briefly into two fifties, just so we don't lose track. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to make it five here on this line. And this is just temporary so I can subtract. All right. So I'm taking one off and we're good. I'm going to have a similar problem here in which I've got two on the hundreds line and I want to subtract four. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to make it five. So I've got my two original ones, one, two, three, four, five. All right. So now I have four pennies here that I need to take off and one, two, three, four pennies there. I have two pennies I need to take off here and then one penny on this space and I'm done. That's all you have to do to subtract and to add with a counting board.